the world champion as we get ready for the women's start. Certainly um, among the many favorites. You see Sarah Hall right there. Lona Salpetter in the bright pink shoes. She will be a contender. And that's Edna Kiplagat running her sixth Boston Marathon. She's a two-time winner here. 43 years old. I mean, the list goes on and on, but we have to keep our eye on her. She is a running master's record waiting to happen. And she set that master's record here last year. I love that there's 90 clocks around this place, but you guys all still start your own watch. But I love that Dez is as chill as she always Des is. Dez Linden, yeah. You know that there's a, a fire burning inside of her, but she's just hanging out, starting her watch, and you know, Dez, speaking of her, she's one of those those returning champions and she said she feels this energy this year she knows that we are celebrating 10 years um, we are also honoring those 10 years and she wants to have a really epic day today yeah she says she's feeling the boston magic they have really large elite fields here in this race. They really do. Uh, you know, there, there's 60 runners deep. Now, not all of them obviously can win, but that's still a very large elite field. And look at how different this pack looks right now. As you see Dakota Lynn Worm and Laura Thweet up front, you know, it, it's different than the men's race. The men's race got off, and you could just see the pressure and the and the excitement to get out there. And it's, it's almost a little bit more of a calming effect right now in the women's race. Being the 10 years of uh, remembrance and reflection is huge. So, i tell you the ones to watch, but there's so many right there, it's hard to pick them out. So if we have a graphic, we could put that up, see, and then we could tell you about the ones to watch. It'd be a lot easier than sorting <laughs> through that, but here's the person in your purple. When you, there you go. Uh, Gandhi Tom Gebre Selassie, world champ. That's pretty darn good. Lotus Selpetter, who has had a lot of high finishes but doesn't have their world marathon uh, uh, major yet. And then Jocelyn Chepkoskai, who a lot of people thought was going to win last year, did not. Yeah, just kind of suffered the final miles there, but has that seventh place on there and does not want to be seventh again. She wants to be closer to that podium, and if not, cracking the tape. Won the London Marathon. She's won the New York City Marathon, so certainly... Uh, the Kenyan great has some bona fides. And then Edna Kiplagat, who we touch on, and Ababel Yeshina, who was part of the great finish last year where they switched, uh, where they traded the lead seven times in the last mile and a quarter. Yeah, she and Paris Jeftichir, who is not here, the defending champion, is not back this year, but Ababel was second, and her post after she finished second was, that left a sour taste, so she didn't like it either. Sarah Hall, obviously. Happy birthday, Sarah Hall. Turned 40 <laughs> yesterday. Fourth fastest American ever, over 26.2. Helen O'Beary, who, if I was gonna, you know, put a quid or two down somewhere at the old betting house, uh, she might get my might get my money. Uh, and, and two great Americans as well, Alephine Tulemek, who's won her Olympic trials back in 2020. And Des Linden is a, is a legend around here. She sure is, and she should be. I mean, the way that she's run on this course, second in 2011, and then winning in 2018. Alfino says she's in the best shape of her, her life. And Helen O'Beary, if she gets this marathon thing, she is going to have that greatest of all time runner as Kipchoge does in the men's race. She comes with some unbelievable track bona fides in her resume. 10,000 meters, the last world championships at Eugene, her last really an important track race, she was uh, second when the silver medal in the 10,000 as she came through. So they're a little less anxious to sort this thing out. Do you think every time Des, the defending champ from 2018, when she won that, do you think every time she goes out now and goes like, the weather's great? <laughs> After winning in 2018, which was just yes. the worst of all time conditions, she's got to be like, wow, super day to go running. I actually think she does. You know, <laughs> when you read her, her new book, she talks about that. She grew up in California. She went to college in Arizona. She moved to Michigan, and everyone was like, wait, how are you going to do in Michigan? And she loves 
the conditions when they're bad. Mm -hmm. She loves a hard race. That's why she chose to race over 26.2. She is gritty. She is tough, much like all of the women that we are looking at on the screen right now. And one of them just tucked in there in all green. You can just get her on the left of the seat. Just a quick note there to Nell Rojas, the top American the last two years. Yeah, Nell Rojas really loves to run here. You know, it hasn't even been two years. It's been since that COVID race when it was in the fall. So about 19.